And now, a look at Hall of Heroes, the first expansion for Raiders of the North Sea. Raiders of the North Sea Hall of Heroes was designed by the original designer of Raiders of the North Sea, Shem Phillips, and continues to feature the artwork of Mihalo Dimitrevsky, better known as the Miko. We are big Miko fans here. It was published in North America by Renegade Game Studio in partnership with Garfield Games in 2018. So this isn't the new hotness, but it's something we've been enjoying recently. This expansion adds a new section, the Mead Hall, to the main board of Raiders of the North Sea, along with new actions on that board. It adds a quest and reputation system, a new resource, Mead, and a number of new townsfolk cards, some featuring new abilities. In addition, it also includes the components to add a fifth player to the game and player boards that can be used at all player counts. Now, a copy of Raiders of the North Sea is required to use all this content, and it's also worth noting that unlike many board game expansions, this is not modular. You have to use everything in the box. You can't, for example, just add the new towns for cards and not use the new quests. Well, for a look at what you get in this expansion box, check out our Raiders of the North Sea unboxing video on YouTube. Now, a few things I want to note here. For one, you get this expansion, the box doesn't actually shut. It's in the shrink wrap, and it's supposed to look like that. Uh, it's due to the fact the box is very full, and the included punch boards don't actually fit when the lid is shut. Now, once you punch them, everything fits fine. And the publisher obviously decided it was better to ship it with the top not quite fitting instead of making a larger box just to fit all the extra cardboard. Honestly, it's rarely a bad sign when you see this nowadays. It means that they've really thought about the box contents and storage of the game mm. and didn't want to compromise that and, uh, you know, before the boards were punched. Yeah, I've seen this more. It seems to be being accepted more and more. After seeing the first couple games that did this, people seemed a little upset, but it seems like people are accepting of this. So um, the eight pages of rules for the expansion are very clear. They were perfectly fine. Lots of examples. Three punch boards were well punched. Um, they have quest tiles, reputation tiles, and multiplier tiles. I do appreciate the multiplier tiles. Those are just in case you run out of gold or provisions, which isn't something that would happen at the normal player count, but at higher player counts, it's possible. Now, the thing that takes up the most space and weight in this box is the new Mead Hall board, along with six new player boards. There are one of these for each player. Now, note, this expansion makes the game go up to five, but this includes six. So to use that, you are going to need the, I don't know if it's a second or third expansion, but at least one more expansion for this game. Uh, there are also some wooden tokens. Most of the wooden here are going to be the new Mead tokens. And there is a whole new deck of 30 new citizens. So good quality components that fit in well with the original game quality-wise. Mm -hmm. So what is it we're going to be doing with all this new stuff? All right, so I mentioned one of the things this expansion does lets you play with five players. So this does require a slight rule change. This takes part during setup. Instead of just getting a random starting town folk, you introduce a drafting mechanic. You're now going to get five town folk card, pick one to hire for free. This is a big thing. And then pass two of your remaining cards, one to the left and one to the right. Now, the most interesting thing here is that the designer also suggests you use this variant with less players. Because what it does is that free card just start jump starts the game a little bit and cuts a bit of time off the overall game length. I think it's just interesting to see a bi-directional card pass like that, not right or left, but right and left with yeah. your cards. True. Next, we have the 30 new townsfolk cards. You just shuffle these in with the existing townsfolk. Many of these have new abilities, which of course list in the rules. Now, what I like most in here is that there are new heroes. One of the complaints, I, I know I'm about complaint, but one of the, the idiosyncrasies of the original game is that there are only four heroes, or three heroes in the original deck, and it's a four-player game. So it always meant someone might be left out if you managed to get through the whole deck. Well, they fixed that. I think there's a total of six heroes now. Everyone can have a hero now. Next, we have the Mead rules. Now, Mead is earned in the Mead Hall, which I'll get to in a minute as well as through some of the new townsfolk card actions. Anytime when raiding, before rolling the dice, players can spend mead. Each mead gives the players one military strength for that raid only. Plus one strength for booze, definitely a Viking game. Now the rest of the additions are tied to the new mead hall board. This you place under the main board, it's well designed, so the art lines up, it just looks like the board's bigger. Actually, if I know, if I remember correctly, you can even get a neoprene version that has the, the board built in. On it are spots for three townsfolk cards and four reputation tiles. This board has one black worker placement spot that allows players to pick from two actions. 
The first is Charm the Crowd. You select one of the townsfolk cards that are on the hall board, add it to your hand. You also collect any coins or mead shown on the board above this recruited Viking. The second action is Complete a Quest. This is the most complicated part of this expansion. With Hall of Heroes, any time a player completes a raid on the main board, this is the main thing you're doing in the main game, after taking the plunder from the raided location, you're now going to place one of the new quest tokens randomly from that onto that spot. Now, each quest shows a required military strength. That's the red number for people who know the game but don't know all the special terms. Um, and shows a picture denoting the quest type. There are three different types. And list rewards earned for completing the quest. So the way this works is when someone takes the completed quest action on the mead hall, you're going to pick one of the quests on the board to complete. And you're going to discard town folk from your hand. Note, these aren't the ones in your raiding party on the board, but one's still in your hand. And you have to discard an amount equal to the military strength or higher of the quest tile. Note, all of this military strength has to come from the cards. You can't use mead here, and you don't get to add your armor level that you built up during the rest of the game. Now, once a quest is completed, you're going to get the rewards in the quest. You're going to place the quest on the top of the new player boards. Now, if you complete three quests of the same type, you earn reputation for being good at that quest type, and you take one of those four reputation tiles from the meat hall. Note, these aren't replaced, so the only four max can be earned, and players can earn more than one. Each of these gives a one-time bonus. These can be things like play a townsfolk for free or so on. Earned reputation cards are also placed at the top of the new player board. Now, that player board at the top has a row of victory points similar to the Valkyrie track on the main board. And depending on how many tiles you put up there, you're going to get various points up to a maximum of 16 points for collecting 10 tiles. Now, all the other rules in Raiders of the North Sea still apply. There are no changes except for that drafting thing at the beginning. The other worker placement spots work all the same. The end game conditions remained unchanged. And the military, or sorry, and the scoring is exactly the same with the addition of that new reputation track. So this expansion really focuses on adding more as opposed yeah. to changing existing. As good, expan good expansions, I feel, should when you get the base game right the first time. Yeah, that is, that's a good description of what it does to this game. It, does, it adds breadth to the game instead of depth, I guess. You are getting more options. So the first thing I thought when I got this expansion was I knew it. Because when I played Raiders of the North Sea, the spot you put the plunder for all the raids is a very distinct shape. It's this, like, not quite a rectangle. And I'm like, there's got to be a reason they use that shape. Well, this is it. Because this is the quest tiles fit in those spots. I knew there was going to be a thing. I knew there would be something. Now, I'm not saying this is a good or a bad thing. But obviously, when Shem Phillips designed the game, he either already had this expansion planned or in mind. Or at least had been planning to put it out. Which I know that frustrates some people because they feel like they just got an incomplete game with the base game. But I've never felt my Raiders of the North Sea experience was incomplete. So I just think it's a thing. I don't have a problem with it. Now, talking about those plunder spots, let's start off with the new quest system. So that's the biggest part of this expansion. Personally, I like it. I like it a lot. I like that something else happens after a location's raided. Something that gives all the players more options now. And I also like that the more raiding that happens, the more quests that pop up, giving everyone in the game more ways to work towards getting victory points. Plus, it also adds a new mechanic of now playing cards from your hands, which adds another use to every townsfolk, because already your townsfolk could be played as an action or played into your raiding party. Well, now they can also be kept to complete quests. I like that you're adding a third use to all the cards. Personally, I like having more options like this, right? I'm a Stefan Feld fan. I like point salad. So throwing that in, I thought was a bonus. I greatly enjoyed the addition of the quests. The problem is, though, is that this now takes away from the theme of the game, which is raiding. Like the game's called Raiders of the North Sea. You're supposed to be playing raiders. Now it is totally possible to play Raiders of the North Sea and never actually go raiding with your Vikings. Now, we did find over multiple plays, this may not be the most viable strategy. It is one I have seen win the game if no one does anything to stop it. Now, some people I played with, I won't mention any names, 
did not like this new edition of the game and just felt it watered down not only the theme of the game but just the tightness of the base game that it was gather stuff go raid gather stuff go raid now it's gather stuff go raid maybe do a quest maybe go get some mead to level up it, it just kind of watered down the overall experience and it is interesting that an expansion specifically called hall of heroes now while i was winning without the sort of martial prowess that vikings would consider heroic <laughs> no but all these quests are martial remember you are spending military strength to complete each of these quests it's just you're not raiding you are i, I forget the three quest types so you're still you're still spending martial strength so it's still still a viking thing there so i i think it still fits it's just not raiding now, the rest of the content in this expansion has had much more universal appeal for everyone I played it with. Everyone loves the way to re the new way to recruit town folk. Everyone I played the game with likes that they don't just have to go to the gatehouse and get random cards. Instead, they can see what's on the board. They can pick which heroes they want and get a reward for them. Now, there is a disadvantage to this because now your opponents know what cards you have, but you get that need as a, as a counteraction for that penalty of your opponents knowing what you have plus if you're playing with inexperienced players they're not going to care what cards you have anyway but when playing with experienced players it's good to know that oh you just drafted a grave digger so i know you're probably going to do this now the mead resource has also proven to be really popular uh what i've seen is people like to be able to stock up and then use them to score big in raids that they would otherwise would be risky based on your current military strength and armor value this also has a side effect that we found of speeding up the game slightly as players were able to complete the larger, more difficult raids earlier in the game. And what we found since adding Hall of Heroes is that most games now end because there's only one fortress left on the board, as opposed to the offering pile running out or running out of Valkyries. Well, who doesn't like mead, am I right? Now, one expression of this expansion I did not really enjoy was the five-player aspect. Over multiple plays, I had already decided that my favorite player count for Raiders of the North Sea was three. The expansion didn't change that. I still think, even with the expansion, three is better. When playing with four players, there can be a bit more downtime than I would like due to AP, analysis paralysis. And this is worse now, right? This is just exasperated with the new play options because now you have many more things you can do at Hall of Heroes. And then once you get up to five players, it becomes even more time between turns. Now, I will note, I do prefer four players with Hall of Heroes over four players with the base game. Uh, due to the fact that competition for raiding spot gets very cutthroat with four players in the base game. Whereas now, if it's too cutthroat, you can kind of sit back and do quests instead, right? So if you're like, oh, all of the, I can't remember, monasteries are gone, I'm screwed. You're like, no, you're not, because now you can do the quests that were opened up at the monastery. So uh, Hall of Heroes does make the four-player experience better. But overall, I still think I'd rather play with three. Regarding Hall of Heroes in a, as a whole... I really like it. I, I like the new gameplay elements. I like the, the new quests. I like the renown. I like everything that's added, but this hasn't been the case with everyone I played with. Well, everyone loves having more town folk to pick from and ways to recruit them, and they love the mead thing and the way that affects the game. Not everyone enjoys the quest and reputation system. What I didn't feel was needed at all was the ability to play with five players, though I understand many game groups push publishing companies for higher player counts in the games. That's definitely a, a direction that every company is pushed. We want to play with five. We want to play with six. We want to play with seven. Personally, at that point, I say split your group and play two different games, but I get it. Wanting to keep everyone together in the same game. I personally can't recommend this at five. Well, I wonder if given your concerns on time and analysis paralysis, if the game might be a solid turn-based online play at the higher counts. I could see it. Just uh, it, the, one of the things I like about Raiders is how quick it is. Like it's like an hour to finish a full game with the expansion, maybe an hour and a half. And I just I, I feel drawing it out might have the problem we've had playing other games online, where you kind of forget what you were trying to do. Especially in this one, where you're collecting plunder or Vikings or uh, gold to hire more Vikings and trying to remember where you were going to raid. So I don't know. Uh, I lots, think lots of is... notes, which is some, one thing we're bad yeah. at on BGA. But yes. there are there you sh we should be keeping notes especially on a game like this with this sort of complexity uh, online. Yeah. No, I agree. And, and I know there is a really, I think it's Steam version of this game. I've heard really good things about, but I haven't tried it myself. I don't think it's on like Board Game Arena or Boitajou or any of those. Mm -hmm. I think it's Steam only. 
and you'd have to buy it. And I've heard it's great, but I heard they, they spend a lot of time making it look pretty, and sometimes that interferes with the gameplay. Right. I have not played it myself, not my opinion. So what all this means to me is that Hall of Heroes is definitely a try before you buy. If you like Rage, I, personally, I say go buy it. It's awesome. But I played with people who are like, yeah, I'd rather just play the base game. So because of that, try it first. Me, I tried it. I'd go buy it. I, I loved it. But not everyone was going to. Due to the fact this expansion is not modular, you're stuck, right? Like if you add it, you're adding it all. So you can't just like, oh, I like the new townsfolk. No, because a bunch of the new townsfolk give you mead and a bunch of other townsfolk give you quest bonuses and other ones help you with renown. You kind of have to use everything. So it's going to be worth seeing if your group is in favor of the broader gameplay options Hall of Hero Act offers before picking it up. So if you enjoy Raiders of the North Sea, take a look at Hall of Heroes. If you like, you know, point salads and games with more options, if what we've described tonight sounds good, maybe consider picking it up. But I do recommend trying it because not everyone is in favor of adding this game, this expansion to Raiders of the North Sea. Be sure to also check out Mo's written reviews of both Raiders of the North Sea and the Hall of Heroes expansion by heading over to tabletopbellhop.com and clicking on reviews.